Finally, we get to see rock and roll heaven. We got to walk around in your inspiration garden. <laughs> it's just absolutely gorgeous here, and I can see how th this is your heaven. Inspiring here. Ooh, a midnight, I'm waiting for a train. Questions in my head driving me insane. Will he sweep me off my feet, take me to his house of love? Just then, call me on the phone. Hi, I'm Steve King. And I'm Johnny Putman. And for over a quarter of a century at Chicago's WGN Radio, we had the privilege of witnessing some extraordinary live performances in our studio. And introducing our audience to some really great new performers. And that's why we're here today at Jim Peters World Stage Studio. To make God laugh, tell him your dreams. It's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Once you bought it, you can't take it back. Where we're headed. If I recall correctly, it was in the late 90s, we went back to our office and we had this voicemail from this girl that we'd never heard of before. Right, but she really sold herself because I remember standing in the office and she said, I have some music I'd like to share with you. I know you guys play music on the radio, can I? And we said, yeah, and we had our producer call Lisa McClowry. Congratulations, too, because we are so excited. We've watched all kinds of fantastic things happen for you in these 12 years. A beautiful mess. <laughs> when did you first decide that music was calling you, that this was what you wanted to do? Well, if you talk to my mother, it was age two, where I would go up to the radio or any anything musical to start dancing and singing. Back as a child, my thoughts would run wild I had a place where I'd keep my emotions For me, it probably started at seven because that's when I started to play piano. Mm -hmm. On Sundays, we'd go over to my grandmother's house after church. She had the piano. I would just sit at the piano and start playing things. And I'd just sit there for, I could sometimes sit there for hours. What was the first time you sang and you realized, whoa, people are kind of enjoying this? Well, I, I did musical theater mm -hmm. and I was uh, my fair lady. I was uh, Eliza Doolittle and we did many, many plays and that's really where I discovered I loved creating and performing and mm -hmm. singing. When did this go from you love doing it to, yeah, this is what I'm going to do? Fifteen. Mm -hmm. I know exactly. I was fifteen and I was in a rock band called Mischief. The hair. Mm -hmm. okay, that's... So this was your passion. You knew it in your heart of hearts. Mm -hmm. Nothing yet. You never said, "Well, I'll go to school and be a teacher just in case." No way. You know? I knew everything was towards the dream. Reptar. He's no ordinary monster. He's a lizard with a heart. And you, you were working with some great people like Mark, Mark Mothersbaugh. Mark, Mark Mothersbaugh, mm -hmm. Devo, Whip It yeah. Good. Da -na 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 -na. Yeah, yeah and that, was, that was exciting. But with Mark, you had a great a break uh, because he used you in some of his soundtracks for movies. I was the singing voice of the princess for the Rugrats in Paris, the movie, which was put out by Universal. And Through the Eyes of a Child, I co-wrote that with Mark Mothersbaugh and Levant Kopic for the movie The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. And that also came out in the early 2000s, so we had some nice breaks back then. The, the past several years have really been extraordinary for you. Mm -hmm. You've segued into smooth jazz, and uh, what made you want to do that? Was it working with Jim? Was it just kind of a natural evolution? Well, we, we've tried many different things. We, we like to do all kinds of music. Come dancing. And I remember the night we had just played one of Jim Peterick's songs, mm -hmm. Come Dancing. Mm -hmm. You were driving home from one of your performances and you called us up. I remember. And you were just going, you were so excited. Gosh, I get sure. goosebumps just thinking about the first time you 
did that song in studio. I mean, I well, you saw, you looked at me and I was crying. So mm, you want that? You want people <laughs> sobbing and yes. crying, or you want them angry, or, or whatever? Or you want them to respond, wanting to rush the stage, right? Yes. 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 Jim had always been a fan of acoustic alchemy. He and his wife Karen. Um, and that's what inspired you to approach Stuart Coxhead, the manager of Acoustic Alchemy, and say, I would love to write lyrics to your uh, melodies. In they're instrumentals. They're, they're instrumentals. And what did he say? Have a go at it, Chep. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. This is really a different mindset for both of you, mm -hmm. because you're both used to creating, to writing the, the music, to writing the lyrics, now you're taking somebody else's music and saying, okay, we want to put lyrics on here, but you have to make sure the lyrics fit not only the melody, but the mood. And that's a whole different kind of creative thing, isn't it? It sure is. Jim should speak to this because he's the one who actually put the lyrics to 10 of the songs. 10, 10 of, of the 11, 11 songs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we collaborated on, on the very last one. We thought the album was done. And then Acoustic Alchemy got a number one record with a thing called Marrakesh. And I love the song, Lisa loved the song, and we're going, we're missing a bet here, this is the number one song. So we created a song called Visions of Marrakesh, and Lisa and I went to our favorite cubicle at Starbucks, and worked there for three or four hours and got that lyric down, mm -hmm. and cut the track, she sang it, and it became one of the outstanding tracks of the record. too is uh, that you got a little samba sound, you've got gospel, you got rock, mm -hmm. you got straight ahead jazzy sounds going on, all of that within the 11 cuts on the CD. And we can get away with it because it's all under the umbrella of Acoustic Alchemy's right. melodies. It's working. We would be sending tracks overseas, the miracle of uh, you know email and file sharing, and they uh, were putting their brilliant guitar parts over our tracks, sending them back. Uh, they, they used their studio over there for all their overdubs. They felt they were receiving an opportunity and we felt we were receiving an opportunity. So Brand New Hallelujah, the first video. Now one might think because the title has hallelujah in it that this is going to be a religious song, but it's actually a, a song about empowerment and just enjoying life. Oh, it's a huge, powerful message. Mm -hmm. It really is. It, it, it's so uplifting. Ignoring the landscape. One of my other favorites, Come Inside. Come Inside. Come inside. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, that's the sexiest song in the album. Yeah. You think? Uh, it's a <laughs> To me, the song is really about innocence, really. Uh, and in the song, Lisa is going back to her original bedroom where she grew up, uh -huh. at her, maybe her mom and dad's house, I'm guessing. And this time, she brings the young gentleman to her bedroom with the teddy bear and all these old memorabilia trappings. And now she's grown up and gorgeous. And the whole album, it just is extraordinary, but I gotta tell you, the track that I keep going back to and back to and back to is A Beautiful Mess. Ooh. Oh, it's gonna be oh, so yes. strong. It ain't always pretty, but it's a beautiful mess. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed this profile of Lisa McClowery. And we hope you get your hands on Lisa's new CD, Lisa McClowery Sings Acoustic Alchemy. It's available wherever you buy your music these days and at lisamcclowery.com. And since we have one in our hands, we're going to go pop it in our CD player. Two, three, And I want to thank you two for giving me a chance, you know, <laughs> 10 plus years ago. and 
he had no idea who I was and he took a chance on me. So I thank wish we'd you save very, that. very much. I wish we'd save that voicemail. Yeah. Because <laughs> well, you sold yourself, girl. And, you were great. And back at you guys, and, and Lisa and, and Jim, with all the success that you two have had and will have, <laughs> thanks for still taking our calls. <laughs> <laughs> Call in Steve and Johnny. <laughs> It's a beautiful mess.